Hi everybody, I'm Justin from Main Man Bassing. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how I made my really cheap bass boat. It's not pretty and it's nothing to brag about, but it does get me on the water, gets me on those lakes, and I've caught a lot of bass with it. And I haven't died from it. <laughs> I'm still alive with this boat. Um, so if you're new to the channel, I do product reviews, fishing adventures, and how-to videos that all revolve around bass fishing in the Northeast. If you're into fishing, I'd love to have you as a sub, so hit that subscribe button. In the description box, I'll link up, I'll probably link up some things that I've used to, to build this boat, like the trolling motor, the, the extension handle, uh, the transducer, the magnetic transducer mounts. And I'll also link up, like I painted my boat and I made a video about how to paint it and I built a deck for it and I'll, I'll link up that video. It, those are, well, one of them is short, but the, the deck video is really long. So I'll link those up as well. And you can check them out. And um, surprisingly, uh, a number of people have, have in the comment box have asked me what's my setup. They'd like to do something like that. And I'm thinking, you're crazy, man. Like, why would you want to do this? It's ridiculous. It's, but I, I think if one is if you don't have the money and you, you can't, finance a $20,000 boat, you might not have an option. And the other thing is, is you might just want to do this to see if you can really fish like throughout for an extended period of time, like through a couple seasons and see if you can handle eight hours on the water by yourself, right? See if you can go, see if you can go five, five fishing trips at eight hours at a time and not catch anything and still be interested in fishing before you make a big investment. So uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you some pictures and talk about generally how I um, how I built the boat. All right, here we go. First, let me say there's nothing cheap about boats. It's a continual exchange of currency. Um, <laughs> there's always something wrong with a boat that you need to fix, right? Or the trailer or the wiring. So we'll start with the boat, the Marlow Doyle in all her glory, right? And I got this boat and the original trailer for $400. And I'm still trying to figure out if I got ripped off or not. I don't know. Uh, there were holes in it. <laughs> there were, well, yeah, there was one hole and it. it looked like someone took a 22 to it. Um, took me a while to find it. I had to put it up on some, uh, I don't know, I don't forget what you call them, but supports and then fill it with water. And I found this hole in it and it looked like someone took a 22 to it. Uh, but I patched that up with Flex Seal, um, and I painted it. It's a real low-profile boat, so I painted it. I'll link up the video where I painted it, show you what I did. Um, I mean, it's a real low-profile boat. It's a little dangerous when it's windy, but it works. It gets me into those tight, skinny waters back in the coves under trees and stuff, and it's really light, too. It's like 80 pounds. So the boat, I guess from there, we'll go to the engine. And the engine, that's a, a 2015, it was a brand new Merc 9, Mercury 9.9 four stroke. Um, my, the reasoning behind buying a brand new motor was one, I didn't know anything about motors. And two, I thought, well, you know, I'll buy a brand new motor, that way I won't have anything to worry about for seven years. And that's wrong because after, during the third season, things started to go wrong with it. Not wrong with it, but things needed to be replaced that I had no idea uh, about how to replace them. And that's actually a good, because I've learned a lot about how an engine works, right? Like, because with the Merc, the 9.9, .9, there's the thermostat that goes, the water impeller goes, the carburetor, you need to take it apart, change the gasket, um, the fuel pump can go easily. So, so there's a lot of maintenance involved with it. Um, and by the way, this cowling is a replacement cowling because I the top cover because I lost it. I think either someone stole it or it was on the highway. Uh, but you know that Merc though, I'm, I'm glad I have it because that that one is I learned a lot about engines and two, that Merc the total load of the engine boat, all my gear in it, the battery, trolling motor, myself, is is somewhere around 500 pounds. And that Merc can push that boat on glass about 19 miles an hour. So, you know, it's good and I know how to ma maintain it now. And so it basically runs as good as new. 
right? Um, so, so that's the engine. That that was about twenty five hundred dollars. I think I bought it for twenty five hundred dollars, brand new. So we're at like twenty nine hundred now, right? And then I'll move on to the trolling motor, I guess. And that's just a hundred dollar trolling motor. I think it's like thirty pound thrust that I got in like Cabela's, I think, or Dick's Sporting Goods, one of those. And then there's an extension handle because you have to, like it, the trolling motor is laying down now, you have to raise it up and then drop it down. But then the handle is at the deck. So you need the extension handle uh, and it swivels, a swivel mount with it so that you can steer it. Uh, that was like $40. And it, it works, <laughs> but it's painful, man. It's really painful because and I've learned, I have to actually change that. I'm gonna change it next time I go out to the left side of the boat. And I'm gonna steer with my left because it's between casting and reeling and catching, catching them bigs all the time, right? It just wears out my shoulder and steering with it. It's like my shoulder blade is cooked. So I wanna, I'm gonna change it to the left side, but it works, man. It, that, you know, that, that engine and that trolling motor gets me on, on these smaller lakes. I, I fish a bunch of lakes that are anywhere from uh, one mile to three miles long and one to two miles wide. I would not take this boat on, on a bigger lake like Sebago Lake or Lake Winnipesaukee at all. I wouldn't even bother unless if I was staying in, staying in coves, but I'd rather just fish the smaller lakes. I'll move on to the electronics, I guess. And that is a magnetic fish finder mount. And I will, I think the company's still doing business and they're still selling those models. So I'll link those up. I just didn't want to build like any more holes in the boat. I didn't want to drill anything into the boat. There were already enough holes in it when I got it. Uh, there was actually a hole in the side and it looked like someone took a 22 to it. Um, so I had to patch that up with flex seal and you know, there a lot of rivets, some of the rivets were loose and I'd, I'd you know, go over that with flex seal uh, and it still leaks a little bit of water, uh, you know, a fair amount of water. About every hour or two I have to put the engine at top speed and then pull the, pull the boat plug to drain the water. But the magnetic transducer mounts. They work really well. They don't fall off or anything like that. They, they don't fall off top speed. Um, they're just not that stable. So sometimes your imaging isn't that good, but it works, right? Right, and it gives me a good, it gives me a good enough image. I guess I'll move on to the floor. The floor is just a piece of cardboard with, uh, or cardboard, uh, plywood with some carpet on it that I got from Home Depot. Pressure treated plywood. I think I put a two by four on the bottom to give it this, on the underneath on the bottom to give it some support. And that keeps me up off the water that gets into the boat. And the deck, uh, I built that deck and I'll link up a video of how I did it. And uh, keep the, originally when I put the hinges in, I had like if I'm if I'm staring up to the front of my boat, I put the hinges in the middle so that they opened to the front and to the back. Put them on opposite sides of each other, like because there's there's two compartments there to the deck. You want hinges on the opposite side, and it's it's just pressure treated plywood with and it's sitting on the seats that that run across the boat. And um, I would get heavy duty uh, hinges. Don't get the small ones because they'll, they'll just break out. And it's really hard to keep anything screwed into plywood. Uh, so, you, you know, you want at least two on each uh, compartment. And you can see there I have my um, life jacket stored uh, and there's some leaves in there <laughs> that I have to clean out and my, my fire extinguisher. And in the front compartment underneath is that my battery. And that's because that boat was so light. It was, it would just, you know, the nose would just go straight up. So I put the battery in the front, it kind of keeps the nose down and I can still get on plane. Um, Cause it was like really dangerous cause the nose was up so high. And if the wind, it would, if the wind blew right, it would, it would blow the boat right over. So I put that battery up front and I had to splice the wires to the engine and run them up to the front. Um, but 
like I said, man, it's not pretty, but it works. And then uh, we'll talk about the trailer. This, this is actually my second trailer. My first trailer was actually in pretty good condition, right? And then um, it was an easy loader. I don't know what this is. This is like an old trailer, and but the tires on it are really nice, the wheels and the tire. And I, I went on, uh, so the original trailer, because I used to live in Boston, and I drive the boat from Boston to Maine and all the time. And it's just the Boston Highway is just, destroyed the axle the axle was bent and the tires were burning off it so i went on i either went on um facebook or craigslist and just looked up trailers and some guy this was selling this for 400 and i emailed him I'm like look if i decide i want to buy this i'm only going to buy it for 200 dollars." he's like no problem and so i went and i and i went to see it and it was too big like it was just too big for my boat and I was like, nah, man, this is too big. I'm sorry. And he's like, look, I'll tell you what, I'll give, give me a hundred dollars. You can take it. <laughs> so I was like, all right, sweet dude. I'll give you a hundred dollars. And it's big, but it, and the rollers on it are horrible, but it works. And it's actually a lot easier than my other trailer. It kind of just sits right in it. Um, and I don't have to worry about the boat falling off it or if I don't put it in at exactly the right angle, it's fine. And it sits in there and I can go over bumps. I don't have to tie it down or anything. Uh, so it works. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the Marlowe Doyle in all her glory. I cannot wait to get a real fishing boat. I'm hoping to do it in like the next month. But, you know, I can say that the first couple of years, I just, it doesn't matter. I love it. Like, I'm on the water, man. I get up at like 6. I gotta start getting up at five on Saturday and I'm at the lake as early as I can. I fish right till sundown usually because well, I just love being on the water that much. And the boat sucks and it's kind of dangerous <laughs> and it's a pain in the back. Like it's, it's really painful to, to run this boat. Always, something's always going wrong with it, but I can fish and I can catch bass and I can be on water. That's how I spend my Saturdays from May to Thanksgiving. So, um, anyways, I don't know if that helped. I hope it helped. I'll link up, you know, I'll link up a trolling motors and the extension handle and the magnetic uh, transducer mount. I'll link up some flex seal. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean that's I'd find the cheapest boat. I I'd either make them put it if you if you're serious about buying the the boat that's a junk boat from somebody. I'd have them either one put it in the water for you and see if see how bad it leaks and but if they're not willing because usually drunk you know these crap boats aren't registered right have them put it up on something and fill it with water and just see how bad it's leaking if there's just a couple holes you can you can patch them up pretty easily uh but if it's something serious then you know you, you don't want to waste your money and uh make sure that look at the axle on the trailer make sure it's straight if the axle on the trailer is not straight, it's going to tear up the tires in, in like 50 miles, not even sometimes. So you got your axles sort of <laughs> dragging one tire, basically, if, it, if, it, if it's not even. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. And then start saving money and get a real boat. <laughs> right? So, anyways, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped. I hope it gave you good perspective. Uh, if this is your option, I can say that I, I don't, if this is the only option you have is to buy one of these unsafe crap boats that are dangerous and uh, embarrassing, <laughs> but it gets you on the water fishing, then I'd do it. I would. I'd do it. Just be careful. Uh, when it's windy, I put my life jacket on. And if the waves are going crazy and there's a lot of boaters, I'll, I'll actually put the, uh, the safety uh, key engine switch on. I will. I'll do it because it, it, it can be that dangerous. But anyways, I'm done talking. <laughs> Go build your boat or buy a new one. All right. I'll see you later. I hope you catch a big bass soon. Thanks. Bye.